closing out the first round without the best performer in 2022's playoffs so far in Jimmy Butler, as well as Kyle Lowry, another former All-NBA and All-Defensive first-team player in Victor Oladipo, was still able to help Miami send Atlanta to Cancun. This video breaks down how Depot torched fans in the ATL during Game 5. You're also going to find out the main reason for why the NBA is going to hate the two-time All-Star in Victor finding his flow and being a part of this loaded roster for Dade County. Right before that, just 10.1% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes just a few seconds and it makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Hoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. ESPN's first take just ran a segment questioning whether Jimmy Butler sitting for a Game 5 Heat win was a bad look. I know there was a ton of hype for this team in the intro, but as you can tell, not everyone sees the value in Miami's core being able to close out a round in the postseason without not only the hottest player through the first four games of it, but the team's biggest vocal leader and six-time All-Star at point guard in Kyle Lowry. It doesn't get much more disrespectful than that if you're ESPN, as Stephen A attempted to make Jimmy Butler look like a villain instead of giving credit to the man who led Miami to their Game 5 victory, a player who's gone through hell and back over the past few years. The face of the Indiana Pacers franchise only a few years ago in Victor Oladipo has fought through a ton of adversity since then. During the 2018-19 season, he suffered a ruptured quadriceps tendon in his right knee, keeping him sidelined for 371 days. After he returned to play 19 games in 2019-20, midway through the next season with Victor struggling to stay healthy, Indiana shipped Victor off to a rebuilding roster in the Houston Rockets. Various injuries, mostly to his knee, would hold the once top two-way player to merely 33 games, but he did play for three different organizations in 2021, as three months after getting moved to H-Town, Vic was traded to South Beach on March 25th of 2021 in exchange for Avery Bradley, Kelly Olynyk, and a 2022 draft pick swap. Unfortunately, on May 13th, Oladipo was forced to have season-ending surgery to repair that same right quadriceps tendon. Despite the fact that he'd be sidelined for the entire regular season, Miami still would extend Oladipo to a one-year veteran's minimum. Vic returned to the court on March 7th, skipping ahead to Game 5 of 2022's first round, and after spending most of the series against Atlanta, plus the end of the regular season at the end of the bench, Jimmy Butler missing Game 5 with knee inflammation, that gave Depot his chance to finally own the spotlight. Opening the game with drives to the basket, he used to earn a max contract off making. Watch these elusively quick in and out dribbles in transition and explosions to the hoop, which allows Vic to tear through Atlanta's defense right off the bat. Using a screen and bodying off DeAndre Hunter in the lane, this nifty step back and one-legged fadeaway gives you a taste of how much the former All-Star has left in his bag. But the very next conversion for Victor, he goes right back to how he began the game by dominantly using his first step to attack the Hawks' defense before it can set up. This time, Oladipo starts his attack on the left side. He utilizes a simple stop-and-go dribble and spins off John Collins like a whirling dervish. Don't forget, Vic was all-defensive first team merely a few seasons ago. This ball hawking and cookie snatching on DeAndre Hunter, and also this near chase down on Trey Young, where he ends up getting one of his three steals on the night, made Victor resemble the defensive talent that he was during his prime days for the Pacers. On the other end of the floor, after the plays we just looked at, Victor went on to knock down three triples in Game 5, one being off the dribble, which was a spin move and step back deep range bomb. It's great to see Oladipo finally resembling his all-star self again, the two-way offense manufacturing mastermind that Hoops fans came to know and admire. It was Victor's first 20-plus point playoff game since the 2020 bubble, and speaking on his standout performance on the biggest stage, Depo said post-game, quote, A year ago today, I was expecting and waiting for my next surgery. I remember a year ago around this time, I was sitting in a dark room by myself, just broken, not because I quit, but because I was at the lowest point I could be at. Meanwhile, Jimmy Butler spoke on the report about his quote-unquote beef with Oladipo, saying, I'm used to it, I'm always the bad guy, that's okay, bad guys are welcome here in the Miami Heat organization, I love my guys, end quote. 
More on Victor coming up, but speaking of Jimmy Buckets, former sharpshooter turned GOAT analyst JJ Redick had this to say regarding Jimmy's 2022 playoff dominance, quote, he's been far and away the best player in the playoffs. Jimmy averaged 30 and a half points, 7.8 rebounds, and 5.3 assists on shooting splits of 54, 44, and 78 over four games against Atlanta. Displaying he's one of basketball's premier two-way caliber talents, Butler's physicality wore out a Hawks team that looked absolutely stunned. He stole passes off the inbounds and on the other end, converted against bigger bodies for and ones. Grooving to his own beat, he bodied defenders in the post and rose up for mid-range jumpers like it was nothing. The man has pristine footwork around the restricted area with an ability to stay balanced after pivoting and then nail jumpers over the outstretched arms of opposing big men. Even if you crowd him at the basket, Butler's a very talented and more than willing facilitator. Considering the Heat have an overwhelming amount of marksmen from beyond the arc, Butler's playmaking for himself and his teammates forces defensive game plans to pick their poison. The Miami Heat have been a first-class organization ever since one of basketball's all-time smartest minds in the great Pat Riley took over as both the team president and head coach back in 1995. Riley was coming off four championships as the coach of the LA Lakers in the previous decade, and while he failed to win a title during the Tim Hardaway era, drafting D. Wade and trading for Shaq helped Pat coach the Heat to the organization's first chip in 2006, and in 2008, Riley would take over as the full-time president. Two more championship banners have flown since then. Of course, the Heat's dominant LeBron, Wade, and Bosh Big Three gave the 305 four straight finals appearances, including back-to-back -back rings in 2012 and 2013. Between his time as a player, coach, and executive, Pat Riley's won eight NBA championship rings. But for allowing Riley to step into the executive's box after being worn out from several decades of coaching, that's where we have to give credit to the current man in charge for Miami in Eric Spolstra. Since becoming the Heat head coach in 08, Spolstra's won 20 playoff series. Putting that into perspective, that's 20 series wins in 14 years. Also, since 2006, the Heat have the most playoff wins in the NBA with 104. Meanwhile, the New York Knicks have the 27th most with eight. In terms of 2021-22, after the altercation with Jimmy Butler, things could have easily spiraled out of control, but instead, this group has learned from that moment and it's made them closer. Putting Trey Young in solitary confinement, you can give Spolstra a lot of credit for his defensive game plan to lock down the Hawks franchise player. In Game 1 against the Heat, Trey Young had 8 points on 1 for 12 shooting from the field. In Game 2, while he had 25 points, he shot just 2 of 10 from 3. In Game 3, he had 24 points on 6 for 14 shooting. In Game 4, he had 9 points on 3 for 11 field goals made. In Game 5, he had 11 points on just 2 for 12 field goals made. That's called getting clamped. Miami didn't commit a single turnover in the first half of Game 5 which is the first time that's ever happened in Miami Heat history. It wasn't all bad from ESPN. As Kendrick Perkins said on PTI today, the Miami Heat give me 2004 Detroit Piston vibes. Those goons from Dade County, all they do is put their ski masks on and wait for you in a dark alley. Another all-time great quote from Kendrick Perkins. But to answer the question from the intro, the main reason for why the NBA will hate Depot being on the Heat is because it provides Miami with an overwhelming amount of shot creation off the dribble. Of course, for this Heat team at full strength, they've already got Butler, Lowry, Hero, Adebayo, and Struess to create a majority of the offense, but having yet another top-notch scorer who can get his own can never hurt. But what makes this Heat team most dominant in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout-out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st, receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. Today's Speaks winner is Hamad A, who says, no matter what happens in game six of seven of the Raptors versus Sixers, I'm proud of this team and I'm proud to be a fan of the Raptors. What makes me excited is that this is the worst version of our team going forward. The Raptors can only get better. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.